So I have a question for, uh, I guess, uh, Nichols representing kind of reductionistic science and then Stan Groff representing, you know, this other kind of oppositional aspect. And, you know, you said that you can't, you know, you shouldn't view the, you know, consciousness or the mind as arising, you know, causally out of neurophysiological and neuropharmacological processes in the brain. But then how do you propose that we unify these two sets of observations, one of these transcendental transpersonal experiences that currently cannot be explained by conventional science, and two of the extremely powerful predictive science, you know, of neuroscience, systems neuroscience, neuropharmacology, chemistry, that we've, we've shown to be powerful by our technology technology and its predictive power for what, you know, what we can predict things will do to the brain. Well, you know, contrary to, to general opinion, we have absolutely no proof that consciousness comes out of the brain. Actually, we have a lot of evidence uh, that it is not the case. What we have is, is uh, tremendous evidence from experimental neurology, clinical neurology, experimental psychiatry that states of consciousness are correlated with anatomical, physiological, yes, yes. biochemical changes. That's but a how whole you, other... how do you propose a, to explain those correlations, then, is what I'm asking. Well, this is what they are. They're correlations. But that you make a major jump when you say this is... This proves that consciousness comes out of the brain. Well, I understand, but the it correlations be, still need to be explained in some way. And, you know, how do you propose to do that? Because it's an important thing to explain them. You know, I mean... You know, um, the physical world and, like, what's going on out there have to have well, some kind of correspondence. I'm sorry. We have no, it's a, a perfectly reasonable question. Everybody agrees, I mean, now daft if they don't, that there are correlations there. And the question is, how do these two radically different approaches presume to explain it? So we can you have a go same, at answering? We have the same relationship between a television set and the television program. You see, there are systematic correlations between what's happening with the, with the relays and the condensers and so on and the quality of the picture and the sound. This is what they are. They're correlations. We would laugh if somebody would think that this means, this is a proof that the program is generated in the box. Okay? This still leaves open some other possibility. We have just enormous number of observations. I don't have time to go into them, but I'll give you just one which is a re repeated observation that people in near-death situations, like uh, cardiac arrest in a, during an operation, consciousness goes out of the body, maintains the, the, the ability to perceive the environment. You can watch your body from, from the ceiling. You can go through the wall. You can accurately perceive what's happening in other parts of the building. You can experience something that's happening 1,000 miles away. There's no way the current model the way we understand the brain can account for that. You don't have to study medicine to know. Yeah. I'm going to have to stop if, you there, I'm afraid, um, if we're going to have a chance to, okay. for David to say something. I think he was also out. Did you also ask David? Yeah, yeah, I did. So, again, that provided the opposite perspective, or, you know, your perspective, I guess. Not so we need, we need a theory that explains yeah. the, well, current, I, yes, the current observations, this. but also yes, the observations I, I, from I an ordinary state. I understand this, but how do you propose, you know, directions <laughs> towards such a theory? I think this is question. too big a question for here. Uh, well, I'll give a, just a very short time to David if he wants to say something. I think Stan was doing a great job, but uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I am reductionistic about 80% of the time, and certainly I have the view that these chemicals can change consciousness. Now, exactly how that happens, I'm not completely sure, but I have chemicals that I could give you that would reliably change your consciousness in very dramatic ways. They presumably act in the frontal cortex, which is the most recent evolutionary addition to the brain. It's where we make all of our executive decisions. And we don't really know what the cortex does, but as humans, it's the most important part of the brain we have. And I view these chemicals as really being more like a necessary but not sufficient switch that turns on a process. So if we use the television as an analogy, these are like just turning on the power switch. What channel you tune to and where you turn the volume and so forth is set and setting and, and preconception and so forth. So I'm basically looking at these as a switch that, that somehow shuts off ordinary processing and allows consciousness to change. But where it's located, I mean, as a reductionist, I'd have to say it's a product of brain, but uh, publicly that's what I'd say. 